here's how you can build your own DeepSeek R1 app today and we're going to be using a no-code platform called Bubble to do that and if you want to learn more about Bubble do check out the rest of our channel because we've got hours and hours of content of how you can build your own apps basically with no code all with bubble.io but let's dive into this video looking at DeepSeek because it is the topic of the week if not uh, the last few weeks uh, and we're specifically focusing on DeepSeek R1 because that's the one that everyone's saying has the similar performance to OpenAI's most recent reasoning models. Now we're not actually going to use the DeepSeek uh, Deep Seek API, uh, we're going to be using uh, Together AI to do that simply because uh, the Deep Seek API I've actually found it a little bit difficult to get into. I mean, I, I imagine their servers are just swamped, but thankfully, because Deep Seek is a open source LM, it's an open LLM, it's an open source model. Uh, it means that other providers, uh, I believe Meta is running it, you can get it on Grok, but we're going to be using Together.ai because they give you a pound to play with when you sign up. So for starters, we're going to go into my together.ai account and uh, first of all, we're gonna just test it out. So I'm on DeepSeek R1, that's their reasoning model. You've also got V3 available too. Uh, and I'm simply going to say, uh, list the planets in the solar system. So not a particularly taxing request. Uh, and we get uh, back a response. Uh, if interesting, it wraps it in a think tank. Um, and actually it's going into rather a lot of detail. That's not a problem, including the fact that uh, Pluto was a planet and now it's no longer counted as a planet. That's fine, I'm just gonna stop it there because it's gonna keep going and keep going. Um, what we're interested in is if we go onto API, it actually shows you everything you need in order to uh, plug this into your bubble app. So if we go into the bubble app, we need to go to plugins. We need to set up our connection uh, with together.ai in order to make and send a request to DeepSeek. So to do that, I go into the API connector. If you're completely new to Bubble, this may be a little bit hard to follow along because we're kind of jumping in. Uh, at, we are jumping at the deep end, but if you do follow these steps exactly, you will have a working app at the end. Uh, if you uh, don't see the API connector, then you would add it through add plugins. Uh, and you can see here that I've really done a lot of demos on this app, all of these things possible with Bubble, with either no code or certainly low code, because we're going to be having to use a little bit of JSON, but I'm gonna explain all the steps along the way. So we add in another provider, you can name this anything you want, but let's put something helpful. Uh, and then we're gonna authenticate in the header. A API key is basically like a password. It's what attaches the events that you run through a third party API to your account, especially if they're billable events. You wanna make sure that, that only, uh, only the right people or indeed you are the only person who has access to the API key. So I will of course be uh, removing this uh, API key, regenerating it straight after I've recorded this demo. But we copy our key and then if we go back to the playground, we can see that they want in the header, H for header, us to authorize with authorization bearer and then our API key. So we just match that up with what's going on here in bubble. So I write in bearer and I paste my API key. Uh, then we go down to the rest of the call and it's basically a very common practice when using a third party API. You just take what they present. Thankfully, I think this is in quite a clear format if you go to curl. Uh, you, this is the easiest way I found to take what they have here and translate it into bubble. Uh, so we need content type application JSON. Well, we don't actually need to add that in because that's a default value in Bubble now, but we can see that we need to send a post request to this endpoint. So I'm gonna copy the endpoint, paste it in and change this to post. I'm also gonna change the use as to action because I want this to run when a user clicks on a button that generates a workflow, sorry, that, well, that starts a workflow uh, and a, a workflow is just a series of actions. Uh, so I've changed that to action. And then we need to populate the body of what is sent. So if we once more go back to the playground, we can see here that everything in data, deeper data is gonna be part of the body. Now we don't actually need all of this here because we even get our response here. And this is just an example really helpful early on of how um, most, uh, they, I think that basically a lot of uh, LLMs are using a standardized format, I think made popular by OpenAI. I mean, they say that OpenAI are compatible, which just means that you'll see this everywhere that you, where you use an AI 
or something very similar. And it's showing you that each message, that's a message, that's a message, and then a conversation is just a series of messages. And that's how they have a memory of what was earlier on in the conversation, is that if you wanted to actually have a conversation, you would need to send each message, uh, like message one, message two, message three, you need to send the whole conversation back each time. Um, so I'm gonna just, uh, in fact, if I go back to the UI, can I delete uh, an entry? No, I can't. What if I just uh, refresh it? Um, and then I go to API. No, that's not helpful. So what if I just wrote uh, hello? No, okay, I actually need to send it. So I'll go hello instead. It's just gonna make it a little bit clearer what's going on. Cool, okay. So there we go, we can now see that each message is broken down. So I'm gonna copy everything here inside of the speech uh, or the quote mark and go back into Bubble and paste it in. So all I really need for starters is the first message. So I'm going to delete everything there. Notice I'm deleting the comma too. Um, and uh, then I'm going to say, uh, this is the message from the user. So this is what I need to make dynamic. But before I make it dynamic so I can insert data in, in a workflow, I'm just gonna initialize the call. And this is our way of checking that everything's working uh, and we're not getting any errors. And actually I've spotted why we might get an error, but I'm gonna explain that uh, here. So uh, stop, oh, so Bubble's having an issue with this because uh, triangle brackets are used uh, as a way of inserting dynamic values. What if I escape them, does that work? No, what can I, is stop a required one? Let's just remove that uh, and try again. Okay, so we don't get an error, but Bubble can't detect the data that's come back. That's because we've got stream set to true. And you can't stream text or audio or um, video uh, kind of using core bubble features. There are plugins that can expand upon these, so it is technically possible, but we're just using bubble's core features here, so you can't stream data in. Uh, so I'm gonna change that to false, and then initialize, and now this should work. Perfect. Uh, so we get back our response. And remember, this is uh, R for reasoning model. So we get back thinking, and then we get back, hello, how can I assist you today? So that's worked perfectly. Bubble will detect the type of data that comes back, uh, and it mostly does that well. So the text of its number, the text of its text, it's teaching, well, we're, we're, by clicking save, we're saying this is the structure of the data that comes back. And I'll just uh, rename this to send message. And then I'm gonna make this dynamic. Notice that I'm taking out the speech marks because we'll make it JSON safe. JSON safe is ensuring that any punctuation isn't confused for code when we send it through as text. Now, if you did need to reinitialize here, you'd have to add the speech marks back in because it's now being inserted into this placeholder in line six. So I could then, I could say hello, and uh, I assume this is just gonna work fine again. Perfect. Okay, so how do I go and add this into a page? Well, let's create a new page. Once more, you can see just the amount of content that we've got on our channel and uh, we have even more content on our website uh, for you to explore and get started with AI and building no-code apps. Uh, so let's call this Deep Deep Seek. And this is not gonna be a lesson in UI design. Uh, if you want to design an app well and make it responsive, you would always use rows and columns. Fix just means that you drag an element onto the page and it stays there, but it's not going to be very responsive. Uh, so what we will do is that we will uh, take a multi-line input. That will be our user's input. And this is simply to show you how quickly you can get an app together in Bubble. Uh, and so we'll say uh, send uh, to deep seek. And we now need a way of displaying what comes back. Now Bubble is an all-in-one no-code platform. You've got your UI design here, you've got workflows, and you've got the database. So we could save the response to the database, but I just want it to be temporary. Uh, I just need to have a piece of a text label on here, and I want to be able to show the response in the text label. One way we can do that is by using custom states. It means we're not saving data to the database. It's more like a variable attached to an element on the page if you come from more of a traditional coding background. 
I like to do that on the page level because otherwise you forget where they are, or at least I do. So we'll say response. And it's going to be of type text. So I'm on the page here, just in case that wasn't clear. And by clicking on the I icon, I get extra uh, options to do with the page. Um, and now here, I would simply refer to that custom state. So it's the page, which is called DeepSeek, same as up here. Uh, and it is the response. Okay, now let's add in our workflow. So I can click on the button and click add workflow and we go into the workflow builder, which is just here and we can toggle between them nice and easily. And so firstly, we are going to send the message to DeepSeek, uh, which is not showing up. Let me go back, try and work out why that is. Uh, so it is an action, it is initialized. Um, so yeah, that's a good point. Why is that not showing up? Let me just try reinitializing it. Click save, go into workflows. Oh, it's because I've called it together. There we go. It's because I haven't actually written DeepSeek in either the name of the API call or the name of the API. That's why. So now I take the multi-line input. JSON. Okay. So I rushed right through that. Let me go back. So if I just print the value, then it's going to insert whatever the user writes in without making it JSON safe, which means that it's probably going to miss the speech marks and it's not going to protect the API call uh, from any or any punctuation in there. Uh, so what I say is the value and then I JSON safe it. So not only does JSON safe add in the speech marks around the outside, it also deals with any pesky bits of punctuation. So that's all good. I then want to set the state. This is my way of saving, although not saving to the database, the response. So I say, uh, here's my page, here's my custom state. And then I basically need to target, if I go back here, we can see all of the data we get back, we only actually are concerned about the message content. So we are choices, choices is a list because you can ask for more than one version back. You can send an N parameter. And so if, if N is three, you get three you get a choice of three responses to your message. Now we have not got an N parameter, so it's N is one, that's the default. So we would say choices first item, because it knows it's a list, we're just getting one item, first item, and then message content. So let's find that here. So we would say choices, first item, message content. Okay, I think that's time to good time to preview it. So I'm gonna click preview, and then uh, we're gonna just run it through uh, and you'll see how we've built a DeepSeek powered app in less than 15 minutes. So let's say uh, what is the capital of France and I'll click send. And so now it's making the request uh, to Together uh, AI and it's querying using the DeepSeek R1 LLM and I think we're using a reasoning model, so it's taking its time and it's likely to actually respond with uh, much more than simply a statement that the capital of France is Paris. Taking its time, isn't it? We've not got an error, so I think Bubble is still waiting for a response. And I think this is because it is the reasoning model and it just really takes its time and goes through a lot of the thinking process before giving a response. I should have just said hello. While that's loading, let's go back to the playground and uh, we'll see what happens. I'll say, what is the capital of France? Okay, uh, okay, that was, that was quite quick. Uh, so uh, let's go back to our here and It's really taking its time. Oh, this is very odd indeed. So let's go back to our plugin. Say, so what is the capital of France? Initialize. So we should see here either a similar way. Again, I do think it's because it's the reasoning model, and I've not really tuned any of the. Uh, I've not really tuned much of the data here. Uh, I made the 
even though it made a change. Uh, okay, let's, let's work through why this isn't working. Okay, we've got a response back here. And right, so we, we get we get quite a lot back. Um, in order to prove that it has just worked, let me simply say hello instead. So I'll refresh the page. There we go, how are you today? So I am good. Okay, actually that's not gonna work because we're not keeping track of the conversation. And that's something that I cover in much more detail in my ChatGPT videos where uh, in a number of videos I've demonstrated how to build a ChatGPT clone. And that is all about keeping that conversational context there. We've also got a course, in fact, a really detailed course, uh, which our uh, members through our website can get access to. Uh, which really goes into the detail of how to build no-code apps um, that are powered by AI. But hopefully that's just testing the water of what you can do with DeepSeek. Now, of course, if you wanted to roll this out to users, you would need to add in user authentication. You'd need to add in privacy rules. You might be saving data to the database and ensure that only the right users can see the right data. You need to do all of those things. And we've got hundreds of bubble tutorial videos that show you just how to do that. So do check out the rest of our channel. Head over to our website for more details.